He'll want someone as well. He takes on Bonner. What a kick to Tom McDonald. He went and got it again. They're playing with confidence. It'll bounce. It's another goal. September continues here on Inside Melbourne. Thanks to Zurich. What a win, Katie Price. As I bring you in, uh, the MCG was absolutely rocking last Friday night. Wasn't it? It was absolutely heaving, as you say. But I I know everyone was a little reluctant to celebrate until... Yeah. Yeah, once we just got it locked in. The noise was incredible. Did you get out of your seat a few times? Oh, absolutely. I was going nuts. Um, And majority Melbourne fans too, yeah, it was, which like was great 65, to see. 70,000 red and blue there. Yeah, even more this week. Even more this week. We'll um, put those Hawks to shame, Hawks supporters and players. Oh, they're painful, aren't they? Oh, they are painful. I think I said, <laughs> I, I think I was guilty of sledging them pretty badly in the podcast earlier in the year, but some, some of my great friends are Hawthorne supporters and they're unbearable. Yep. Same. I have uh, one very prominent one at work Yes. in Stephen Quartermain. No good. No good. Hey, um, what about our guest on Inside Melbourne this week, Caddy Price? Um, he's an absolute ripper and in a rich vein of form. Yeah, he absolutely is. And we, co- of course, speak of Sam Frost absolutely dominating in the back line. Frosty, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to see you, Frosty. T- take us back to Friday night. What was it like? Uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting. I was a little bit nervous, probably more so before leaving home. Um, it's a long day waiting around because we don't get to play many night games, as you know. Um, once I got there I was alright and then probably we got the 10 minute call before our warm up and a few more nerves but then once I was out there it was just unreal coming out to the ground the first time and seeing the crowd and it was stacked all the way to the top was pretty pretty special so no it was good fun Did you pick up the noise and the atmosphere out in the middle through uh, the game? Yeah, yeah for sure it was it was seriously loud um, That I mean I think it's the biggest crowd I heard Melbourne's played in front of since 2000, 2000 the grand since final, the grand final. Um, so it's obviously the biggest crowd I'd ever seen and yeah it was it was really loud you got that sense um, frosty probably around four or five o'clock in the afternoon when um, I mean we were both out the front of the, mm. the ground the MCC and the line was quite extraordinary um, it was like grand final day it, it, in the buzz uh, it was really and Paul Roos um, spoke to it as well um, in his commentary just just talking about this immense um, hype around the match and, and you really felt that outside the ground and then, it, then inside the ground um, lining up for the national anthem what was that like yeah that was cool uh, and again we you know we don't do that in the regular season games so that was something a bit new and a bit different but it, it was a really cool feeling and uh, I've probably only really seen that watching my brother play back in the day on uh, Anzac Day for Collingwood um, and it's just a real kind of eerie silence mm. uh, between the end of the national anthem and as the crowd starts to get going and that was really cool i enjoyed that so how do the nerves settle because there were questions about melbourne's inexperience or lack of experience how do you settle in those first few minutes because um you and the boys did a terrific job at exactly that um probably for me uh, i'm lucky that the the mids get first crack and they mm. did such a good job all day so the ball was going forward um, so we weren't under too much heat in the back line early. Uh, and that, yeah, I mean, that probably makes it easier for me. But once the ball was moving, you got too much to think about. So, yeah, no, it was, it was pretty good. And Tommy McDonald's performance in the, the first quarter, he just set the tone, didn't he? Yeah, for sure. And, and again, that helps with the nerves because we go forward, Tommy takes a mark and you sort of settle. You think, all right, well, we're on like, you know, things are going our way. Um, yeah, that, that does settle the nerves for sure. And he was, he was unbelievable early on you got the job on tommy hawkins um how do you think you fared uh i think i was okay i did a reasonable job um he probably got me a few times uh which is going to happen you know you you just you can't really stop everything but um i was happy overall but you know you can always do better i guess i suppose the one criticism would be that you weren't able to shut the door on them that in that second and third quarter, the kicking for goal and the likes. Is that the, the one thing that's come out of the game? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we were we were mostly pretty pretty positive. Uh, but yeah, for sure. Uh, if you look at the first quarter and the scoreline of the first quarter and you think, well, if a lot of those behinds for the next two quarters are goals, then mm. yeah, you've really sort of buried them and sealed it early, um, which would have been nice, but, you know, okay, take the nice. win. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, you, you're right. It, you, we really could have 
could have shut the door, like you said. Frosty, I want to take you to a few moments. The first being one that you were directly, well, indirectly involved with, I guess, in that Tom Hawkins was lining up for goal. And then out of nowhere, uh, a free kick was paid on the member's wing. Yeah. Um, what was your reaction? What was going through your mind? What were you thinking? Uh, I was pretty relieved, to be honest, because <laughs> when you get a when you get a direct match up, um, and that you know, he I think he might have kicked one or two at that stage. But anyway, you sort of take it a bit personally when you get beaten one on one and they're having a shot for goal. So um, no, I was happy that that was kind of taken away from him and and the pressure was was off me for a moment. But yeah, it was it was a big role from from Harmsy and he did a good job, uh, obviously firing up their mids and to the point where they, you know, a couple of undisciplined free kicks and takes a lot of pressure off us. He was brilliant, wasn't he, James Harms, again yeah. on the big stage? Yeah, absolutely sensational. He was all over it. Did you feel like that was a bit of a turning point? I think Harms, he said he felt that way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, you just start to feel like, you know, a couple more things go your way. You start to get on top. You get a little bit of a mental edge and... And they've got some some serious superstars going through their midfield, and you know you're never going to rule them out from coming back because they can Geelong in particular can score so quickly as we we found out late in the season. But um, I, I think definitely that that kind of we probably started to get a bit more confidence, get our backs up a bit, and think yeah, like we you know we can really we can really take it to them. So Katie highlighted the squandered chances between the end of the first quarter and the start of the last quarter. What was Goody? trying to reinforce at three-quarter time because we saw Jonesy come out and nail that goal and and the boys looked on from the start of that final term. Yeah, I think we we don't really talk much about, you know, missed opportunities and that sort of thing because no, it means to of miss. Of course, yeah. Um, we just wanted to stick to what, we, what we'd come out in the first quarter doing, which is, you know, it's always around contests, but with Geelong... It was around stopping their ball movement and not letting them, you know, chip it around and, and cut us up through the middle. So we just wanted to go back to what we were doing with that and then the rest of it kind of flows from there, to be honest. How, Did, sorry, go. I was going to say just the, the Jonesy goal, how big a moment was that for you guys on the ground because it was a pretty special one for the fans? Yeah, it was massive. I, I think particularly because of the way the last quarter went last time we played Geelong, to come out and get the first one was a, a, a bit of a weight off and then... For Jonesy, you know, it's just a, a crazy moment for him, I would imagine, um, how long he's been here and everyone wants to see him go so well. So that would have been big for him and that, that was that was probably one of the louder moments of the game as well. So that was a good feeling. So I was out of my seat on that occasion, yep. as were you. <laughs> and now I think the voice went, probably when Mitch Hannon kicked his yes, goal. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think he, that's when we first thought, righto, uh, we've got it. And when he, had, <laughs> uh, when he started running, I just knew... I, I knew he was going to nail it and I knew we were home. I mean, did that give you a massive lift and, and did you sort of, was there a bit of a, a release then? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you could tell when, like you said, when he started running that that was going to be a, a, a bit of a moment. You know, there's moments through games like that that sort of stick in your mind and you just knew as soon as he went um, that it was going to be one of those. But yeah, definitely. It sort of started to feel like, you know, not that we can relax, but that, you know, we were... Not home, but we were going to be all right, you know what I mean? Uh, Sam Wiedemann is another one who uh, played an outstanding game. Um, I mean, his, his start was electric, um, kicked two goals in the first quarter, uh, finished with three, and was um, the Jukes were... Yeah. They were sticking, weren't they? <laughs> Not only the goals either. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the contest, he, he was in... He's enjoying a purple patch. Yeah, for sure. Uh, his his forward stuff's been unbelievable, and and I think everyone's pretty happy for him that his opportunities come about, and he's and he's taken it with both hands and sort of run with it. But you're right. I mean, he he's going through the ruck, and he's a hard hitter. Some of his tackles, one of his mm. tackles on Dangerfield, everyone loved. It was that, a big and that's one. A, that's right a near the members yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. That's a, that's a tone setting <laughs> tackle. So what, that's exactly the spot to do it. Yeah, and it, and he's just he's just such a great guy. He's so so humble and so sort of softly spoken and and quiet that. You know, you love seeing him get out there and, and get his get his pipes out, a few goal celebrations and that sort of stuff. It's just it's good to see when young guys get that sort of um, opportunity. Bit of swagger. Yeah, absolutely. Spe bit. Speaking of taking opportunities and running with it, um, you've done you've done both, mm. Frosty. How are you enjoying your footy right now? I mean, you're about to play another final, a semi final, um, and you've enjoyed a, a real great back end to this season. Yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it, and it's. Um, you know, obviously, it's a shame when when guys get injured and and they miss out on these times. But that's you know that's footy and everyone knows that. Um, 
but it has been nice to come in when I have and, and be playing the footy that I have been and getting good feedback. And, yeah, I'm just trying to sort of soak up as much of it as I can. Uh, finals is crazy. You sort of always wonder what it might be like. Um, but it is it is nuts and it's a lot of fun. So just trying to enjoy enjoy the ride. Talk us through the relationship with Oscar McDonald because I think you're good mates. Yes. Um, and you can see that out on the field as well. Yeah, for sure. It's no, nah, we we are good mates, and you know we we get along so well. When you're out there, it's just kind of we just have fun playing together. I feel, and and we're quite different players, so I think we balance each other mm. out in our strengths and weaknesses, and and that sort of thing. So, no, nah, I, I love playing with Oscar, and it's it's been really good fun this back end of the year. Uh, has Jake Lever been able to impart a fair bit of wisdom? He played a big role in last year's final series, playing in different colours, albeit. Um, what's he had to say to you about this experience and, and also, again, uh, helping shape you in the back half of this season? Yeah, he's been really good. Um, he stays as involved as possible through our you know, backline meetings and, and throughout the week. Uh, he's sort of got his own rehab program he's on, but he does a really good job of being a part of it and staying involved because he's, he's got such a great footy brain and obviously the, the experience from last year. Um, I think individually he probably tries not to impede too much on on your preparation and and you know he probably doesn't want to feel like he's telling you what to do or how to do it so he's got a good balance of being there for you and helping out um you know without without you know making it about him or anything like that he's he's been really good for me in particular and i think <coughs> sorry i think for the backs in general you spent obviously a lot of time out of the side uh, earlier in the season how did you cope with that and were you always confident that this opportunity would come um, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, as to how I cope with it, I really enjoyed my time at Casey. It's it's often seen as, you know, uh, you don't want to be playing VFL footy or whatever, but the culture we've got now is that everyone's everyone's buying in. Mm. And I think Jade Rawlings has probably led the charge with that. And it's, and it's been the aim of the club to have a one-club mentality for the last few years, and I think it's, it's genuine this year. Um, it's probably been something we talked about in previous years, but this year you go down there and, and Casey listed, AFL listed, it doesn't matter. Everyone's in it together. Um, and I mean, while I was playing there, we had 12 win streak or something stupid like that. It helps mean, when like, you're winning. You, know, <laughs> you go down there and you win and, and it's all it's all a lot of fun. So that didn't really phase me too much, to be honest. Um, and I was confident I would get an opportunity somewhere it was just a matter of taking it one week at a time, really. If you think too far ahead to, oh, when's my chance going to come? Or you drive yourself nuts. Mm. So it was it was just kind of, I guess, staying in the moment and just trying to have fun with it. It's as simple as that. So the next chance comes on Friday night against the Hawks, a semi-final at the MCG. The first time in what feels like an eternity. I don't know how long it's been since Melbourne has played back-to-back Friday night games, but there'll be another super crowd. I think the MCC is anticipating another sort of 91 plus thousand crowd. Mm. Um, They shaded us though uh, early in the season. Um, Now is a great time to get revenge. Um, Can we do it, Frosty? Yeah, for sure. And and I mean, it's no different to the two games we had against Geelong. They sort of got the better of us a couple of times. I think everyone would be confident. We take a lot of confidence out of last Friday as well. A bit of a, oh, they, you know, they had the wood over us this year and, and we haven't played finals before, but we come out and play like that. You sort of you take a bit from that going into this week. But, yeah, no, we'd be very confident going in. Having said that, with Geelong, it was those couple of narrow losses. The mm. Hawks one was pretty ugly. Yeah, 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 no, that's true. <laughs> um, what did you learn particularly out of probably the second half? Uh... We we actually we reviewed that game very very hard. Uh, we talked a lot about contest and defence, and we've really improved uh, in those areas mm. since that game. Probably on the back of that game, because like you said, it was a pretty it was a pretty rough loss. Mm. So um, yeah, no, I think I think we've we've fixed up most of the things that let us down in those games. So yeah, we'll we'll be right. I want to go back to Friday night. Uh, families, <laughs> obviously, a big thing for you. Your family. Yep. We're in the stands, and, and your bro was there as well. He must have been. Uh, he must have been proud for you. Yeah, no, it was good to have. Good to have Jack down. He was. Uh, I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to make it because he was playing NEFL finals up in Brisbane, um, and they unfortunately got knocked out. Uh, and yeah, he happened to be happened to be free, not doing much, probably just playing video <laughs> games all week. So I said, I, I can get you. Someone had a spare ticket. Um, 
so he flew down, which was good, and he's coming back this weekend. So that's that's been nice having the family together. And, and the other great thing I took from Friday night was seeing so many past players in the crowd. I mean, you've got boys there that played in together in 2006 in our last finals campaign who were loving it. I mean, you yeah. see David Neitz in the stands, Brad Green, these guys. Um, does that give you a buzz, seeing these former players just – buying in Jeff Farmer what about Jeff yeah. Farmer yeah. in the stands Please. in the southern stand he absolutely loved, loved it in his D's <laughs> tracksuit or hoodie yeah <laughs> no it is it is really nice and and we do a good job of um keeping the past players connected to the club once a week we get a past player in to talk to us um for our sort of training meeting um so it, it's it's pretty special because it, it really reinforces the idea that it's bigger than just the team and and who's here at the moment like there are a lot of people that are emotionally invested and have been for many years so no nah, it's 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 really nice to see that sort of stuff also in the stands mum how does she go watching the footy uh she's not too bad I th- well i wouldn't know i've never watched <laughs> watched myself play with her so uh, she'll be listening to this podcast yeah she will she give her will. a shout hi, out hi mum how are you going <laughs> yeah. her name is wendy wendy hi um, wendy uh i think she's okay from all reports i think yeah oh actually i don't know she might not be clint your mum <laughs> yes my mum, Tony. Yeah. She she's a big fan of the podcast as well. And in the stands. I yeah, loves it. She's uh, yeah. She spends more time in the bar than she does in the actual <laughs> stands. So it's a little yeah. little uh, similarity between us, I think. <laughs> um, anyway, we're going to come back with some great questions from the outer with our special guest in this, the second week of finals, Sam Frost here on Inside Melbourne with thanks to Zurich. Back to Inside Melbourne, we're here thanks to Zurich with Sam Frost as our guest today. Frosty, a question from Zurich. What do you truly love? Um, that's a pretty tough question. <laughs> There's a few it's things a that one. come to mind. Um, I'm going to go with showering. I really, showering? I really enjoy a hot shower. That's a, fir- that's a first for a the first podcast. Yeah. Melbourne. I mean, it's, it's a simple pleasure, but it, you know, you just, I just like... Warm, Dare warm I water. ask? Yeah, what, what what do you love about showering? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's do I just, know where they should go there? <laughs> <laughs> no, wow, uh, I don't know. It's just just relaxing, uh, particularly in winter. I have a hot shower. I don't know. It's just something I probably spend too much time doing. Hmm. Oh, shall we move on uh, <laughs> after your after your uh, yeah insightful question? There. <laughs> it wasn't my question. It was hey, the Frosty's up. answer. The follow up. <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right. Uh, M. Dungan says, how do I get my rig looking half as good as yourself, mate? Uh, there are some secrets that I cannot share. <laughs> so, I don't know. Hard hard work and a good attitude. We'll go with that. Well, like Tones that. Pep says, how much do you bench? Actually, not that much. Like relative to some of the other guys, uh, probably max out at 105 during pre-season, but that's dropped away a fair bit during the season. You're one of the quickest players at the club if not the quickest are you the, are you the quickest over say 100 uh it'd be a very good race uh, i don't know Jaden hunt is lightning quick yeah. as well uh jeffy garlett joel smith's pretty pretty quick sort of athlete as well so uh, honestly i'm not sure what, what about endurance wise oh, i'm nowhere near <laughs> uh, I'm, i'll be bottom three for sure you do like um, taking off there and, and the supporters love it too especially the mcc members yeah um, you don't mind a, a little chase down here and there no it's good fun yeah no it's it's something that it either it'll either happen or it won't it's it, i find i can't really go out of my way to do it 
when it when it happens it's it's unreal and I, I do enjoy it and I know everyone else enjoys it but yeah it's uh, kind of a opportunistic thing. Well, Gav White asks, he says, you've got an unbelievable turn of pace for your size. You're good on the mark and you like to charge forward with the ball, which gets fans really excited. Do you have any burning aspirations to play in other areas of the field? For example, could you see yourself excelling in a forward role? You did dabble in it yeah, a couple of years ago. I played a little bit up forward and I just don't think I see the game that well from that position. Um, I've probably got the right attributes to do it, but no... Nah, I don't really, I feel comfortable down back and I enjoy playing down back. And yeah, it never worked out for me in the past. So it's not something I feel like putting too much more time into. Robbie Cullen asks, surely you must have a more interesting nickname <laughs> than Frosty. What else do you answer to? Uh, what's he and uh, Ro Bale used to call me Optimus Prime. What? Um, Tell us why. Uh, probably along the along the lines of the, the rig and the stature yep. and that sort of stuff. Um, Never really caught on, but those two still still enjoy calling me that when I see him. Um, what else do I get called? Uh, Lafrost off the back of my Instagram name, which has no story behind it whatsoever. Made it in high school. Um, yeah, nah, nothing too interesting, to be honest. One more name one, and it comes from Matt Holland. How often do you get mistaken for Sam Frost <laughs> from The Bachelor? Uh, <laughs> more so online when things are, uh, I guess... Quoted so or yeah, it, like yes. a, a tag with the name or something like that. It has happened before. I think when she won The Bachelor that night, I got like a thousand new Twitter followers and I didn't know why. I was like, what have I done? So oh, you're probably, I, probably, in the news probably blo- random blokes trying to probably, add Sam yeah, Frost yeah, and yeah, they've, no, was, they've added you. <laughs> it was bizarre. That was, that was a few years ago. It was all quite funny at the time. And then as it dragged on and her career sort of taken off, it's not so funny anymore. Well, your career's taken off too. Has Sam Frost met Sam Frost? Uh, no, I think my brother sat next to her at a basketball game one time. Um, and said, he's my brother, Sam Frost. Yeah, no, I, I, I tweeted her one time because it was all kind of blown up and it oh, was yeah. a bit funny, but I've never How did that person. go, the tweet? Did you come back to her? Yeah, she did. Did she? she? Did. Actually, when I got traded to Melbourne and it was uh, trending for a few minutes, she, <laughs> she, for a few minutes. <laughs> she had the same um, the same issue of all these people congratulating her or following her thinking yeah. she'd been traded to Melbourne or something <laughs> like that. So she tweeted me, which I thought was pretty cool. But anyway, that's my few moments of Twitter fame. There you go. Batchy. Um, <laughs> Dr. Fiveball says, what would you prefer to fight? One Gorn-sized Spargo or three Spargo-sized Gorns? Uh... Go on, size Spargo. <laughs> Just trying to picture Spargo. He looks small enough to be one of our sons, but um, I'd probably take the three Spargo size Gorns. Mm. It's a lot of hair in there. Yeah, yeah it is. A lot of, a lot of <laughs> that is a lot of uh, a lot of hair. Um, Lara, Lara asks, uh, who do you look up to most at Melbourne? Um, probably someone like Neville Jetta, I think. Mm. Um, He's a seriously impressive guy on and off the field. Uh, obviously, there's no no denying the way he goes about his footy is, is something to look, look up to. But I think the way he um, uh, handles his, his family commitments, his football commitments, and also his uh, community commitments, particularly in the Indigenous community, is, is unbelievable. Uh, uh, you know, everyone's got the same amount of hours in the day, but he seems to fit a whole lot more in than I do. So he's definitely someone I like to look up to, and he, and he sets a really good example in a number of ways. Um, Shakton a fool says, "How important were your formative years at GWS? Was learning from a player of Phil Davis's car- calibre instrumental in your development?" Um, yeah, I mean, those first few years are, are definitely definitely pretty important. Um, starting to learn some football craft, and you learn a lot about yourself. You come straight out of school into a pretty intense environment. Um, at, yeah, and Phil Davis obviously is a is a very impressive player, uh, and the amount of responsibility he he took on at a, at a young age at GWS again is probably something to something to learn from in itself. Not even to do with football um, and the leadership he showed. So yeah, for sure, you you you, le- you got a lot to learn in those few years. And I think the advice generally to young guys is just be a be a sponge and taking as much as you can. So yeah, he's a he's a good one to have to have been under for a few years. Anyone floating around at the Giants that you still chat to or keep in regular contact with um not really regular contact uh because you're all kind of doing the same work and doing the same stuff it's hard to really chat uh, about much when you you know mm. you're not with each other all the time it must have been a tough grind i mean when the gws was mm. in its formative 
mm. uh, formative years. Um, what was that like as a young kid being drafted to a club like the Giants? It's. I mean, I know that you're super happy to be where you are now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, it's um, it's hard, but I think they probably, when everyone's so young, everyone's just hungry and wants mm. to keep keep working, and and they did a really good job of taking little wins along the way, like mm. you, you know your first win or you know a few a few near losses where you probably performed better than people thought you were going to. So they did a really good job of that and, yeah, probably just young and naive and you don't know any different. You just want to go at it. So as an extension of that, um, Leroy O'Sullivan asks, who influenced you the most to come to the Ds? Was there was there a moment or a person? Um, I actually spoke to Dom Tyson quite a bit about it, just uh, thinking, you know, I wanted to move back home to Melbourne and um, he'd been through it and, and not... It wasn't all necessarily to do with the D's. It was more about the the move, the move back home, yeah. and, and how it all went, and what it was like. And you know, he had a, he had a much bigger profile than me at the time, so it was probably tougher for him than me. But yeah, he was he was someone I spoke to a little bit about it. Um, and obviously, Melbourne Melbourne's a great club to come, to come to a lot of history and culture, so that was you know easy choice. But yeah, Dom Dom was probably a good person for me during that time. Now the cricket committee comes up a lot on this podcast yeah unfortunately and we've got a couple of questions pat mckenna can we please have the cricket backs back please and sammy weeds chimed in and said please frosty please uh, no <laughs> what's going on uh it's a it's a communal area and it should be an area where people can can relax and and cricket is not all that relaxing when there's balls flying around but uh, I, so hang on so you've confiscated the bats i took the bats yeah and they're in a undisclosed location at the moment and i told them that they could have them back when they fixed the light that they broke which is still out by the way pat and weeds if you're listening um it's still not fixed and i might change my mind and just not give them back at all frosty this is a big story it is a big story (laughs) yeah some might say it's getting frosty in the uh (laughs) in the change rooms there has been some frosty moments (laughs) yeah there has been for sure uh, it's not that nice getting hit in the shin with a tennis ball while you're sitting there doing something. A taped up tennis ball. Ta- like yeah, that. taped up, a bit heavier than mm. your, than your regulation tennis ball. But no, nah, they, they do it. boys are on notice. Yeah, no, nah, they'll, they'll get him back. They're on notice. Um, we both enjoyed this one. It's from The Real Charles mm. Payne. So, uh, I think it's a beauty. I think it's a question of the week. Describe how you felt on Friday in two emojis. Two emojis. Can I check my emoji you can. list? Yeah, you can check your emojis. Is there, is there a, a favourite go-to emoji? Uh, Actually, it's a dangerous question as well. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours, Clint? <laughs> oh, just uh, probably the, the beer. The beer. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. My favourite's probably just the, the crying with laughter Yeah, I think emoji. that's everyone's. That's, that's my top one at the moment. Um, Friday night. Would it be the... Um, It'd probably be... One of them would be the big... The big smile with the like little sweat bead on the oh, on the yeah. head, like kind of stressed but also relieved and happy. happy. And then maybe the, the big smile with the star eyes. I reckon is probably yeah. oh yeah, that's hmm. a good one coming out. What about you, Katie? Favorite emoji? Yeah, probably the crying or the little like hmm one with the thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the one with the monocle. I like as well. Hmm. It's like a similar thinking a- face, but. Yeah. Uh, what about the uh, the the lady d- dancing? That'd be you. Oh, That'd red, be you. The red that would have been you after on the town. <laughs> it was <laughs> on Friday night. <laughs> Maybe Saturday too. Or, yeah, exactly. Well, Can't doubling up that one too often. <laughs> hey, well, if the players aren't allowed to celebrate, apparently, oh, no, exactly. we'll do it on your behalf. Yeah, it's you fine. might yeah, as well uh, make we, up for you it. You know, and we did. <laughs> I'll give you the red hot tip. I did especially. Uh, any more there for uh, for Frosty? Um, are you a cat man or a dog man? From Bill Bruckner. Bill, uh, I'm a dog man, Bill. Do we know Bill? I do know Bill. Okay. Yeah, inside joke from a while back. Uh, Blake <laughs> asks... <laughs> Feel free to fill us in, but no, no, no it's, it's fine. Right. <laughs> Blake asks, when are you going on Australian Ninja Warrior? Is that something you can do in the, the uh, off-season? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if I can do that in the off-season, but I'll go on when they when they invite me on or whenever they're happy to have me. I think it would be a bit of fun actually testing out the course, but um, yeah. You think you'd go okay? Yeah, I think I'd go all right. Oh, <laughs> I like this. Um, I might be able to. I'll have a chat to the producers. I mean, I wield so much power, Channel Nine. Apparently, <laughs> uh, I'll see if I can get you a get you a gig. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty sweet. But uh, you, you got to make sure. 
Joel Smith's on it as well because I, I remember seeing the the talk about who would who would win at the club, and I honestly reckon Joel Joel would be number one. But um, yeah, see so how you go. I'd love to. I'd love to go on. Well, Jack Acton says, "Have you noticed supporters neighing at you? But it sounds a lot more like a goat during oh, games." I haven't noticed it during games. I've seen bits and pieces of it on on social media, which is absolutely ridiculous. But um, no, I've, I mean, keep keep neighing if you want. All noise is good noise <laughs> in the crowd. But I, no, I can't hear it over the the other ninety thousand on Friday night. So take us um, through the rest of the week. Frosty, how does it look and um, when do the nerves start wrangling again? Um, main training today, which would be good. Uh, day off tomorrow, which would probably be pretty cruisy for me, I think. And you, then, you're pretty sore after last Friday? Yeah, no, it was, it was a pretty combative game, pretty physical, a um, bit bruised up, but yeah, we had a bit of a flush run yesterday and feeling all right moving around. And then, yeah, nerves probably, probably be Thursday while we're talking about the game. Um, around our captain's run and our meetings and that sort of thing. And then I'll be fine the rest of the day. And then probably similar again Friday, a bit nervous before before leaving home. And then, yeah, settle as the game gets going, I think. But uh, What do you do on game day to make sure that your, your head's not playing the game um, in the morning, say? Play PlayStation. Do you? Yeah. I like to get on with James Harms normally on game day. We've, it, some, some routines I find just find their way without... You really haven't to do anything about it. We seem to both jump on at the same What's time. What's the game of choice? Ah, uh, we play Fortnite together. Yeah, right. Um, all over it, Clint. Yeah, I'm all over it as yeah. usual. Fortnite probably gets a bit too much airtime, but uh, nah, it's a good way to relax and and just take your mind off it. So yeah, we we just chat about whatever and and have a dip on that. Where do you think the assignment lies for you on Friday night? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm I'm actually not too sure. It's probably not as Defined. Obvi- yeah, it's yeah. not as obvious a week for matchups, so we'll talk about that today and then uh, again on Thursday. But yeah, on- honestly, I really don't know. They're they're probably more of a versatile forward line. Yeah, which, very different side yeah, to mm. for sure to Geelong, and um, I mean that they do have many many dangers that we're going to have to contain. Yeah, yeah, and and we're probably lucky that we've got a, a versatile back line as well. Um, We've got smaller guys who can play on guys bigger than them, like Nev and, and Hibo and that sort of thing. And, and, you know, I don't mind playing on guys a little bit smaller and more mobile than me. So, uh, no, nah, we'll be right. We'll work all that out. But it's probably not going to be as as um, strict with matchups this week. I, I hated – I just hate Hawthorne. So <laughs> if you can do me a favour and do the 70,000 fans in the stands a favour, Frosty, just go get them. Yeah, mm. no, we'll do. That's the plan anyway. But – um. No, we will. We'll be sweet. Katie? I like the confidence. I like the confidence too. Are you confident? How are you feeling? Yeah, no, I'm confident. You got your tickets? I I do get nervous, (laughs) but um, I, yeah, it's not a bad way to be, is it? But yes, absolutely would love, love to see the Hawthorne out. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, and and Melbourne's role continuing on to Perth, Mm. potentially, to play West Coast in a prelim final. Siri, do you have your uh, your tickets? Yes. It was a bit of a debacle for me yesterday. I know. It's tricky, isn't it? It's very hard. It's very tough. Unless unless you know someone. Do you know someone that I can get in contact? <laughs> might have to come I might have you? to come and sit with you. Okay. All right. I don't know if I can cope with you. Yeah, no, I couldn't cope with you. Twice either. in one week. <sighs> Too much. Hey, um, Frosty, we can't wait to see you back out there. Uh, well done on everything you've achieved so far, but hopefully this story has um, has a few more chapters in it this season. Yeah, thank you very much. No, I hope so too. Good stuff. And we can't wait to see you all, the red and blue faithful in the stands on Friday night at the MCG. Melbourne versus Hawthorne. It's going to be a ripper. And um, regardless of what happens, we will talk to you next week here on Inside Melbourne with thanks to Zurich.